Hello everyone, it is me Arijit back with a new video. So recently I have started using Home Assistant to control my home appliances and I already have made, made videos on how you can set up Home Assistant in Raspberry Pi, how you can control your home appliances, how you can control ESP home devices using your Home Assistant, how you can create dashboard and all those things. So initially I was using my the Home Assistant app in my mobile phone to control all of my home appliances. But then I thought, why not uh, building a home assistant kiosk? So from a touchscreen setup from where I can control all the devices as well as I can check sensor data and everything. Now the first thought came into my mind was, why not buying a normal tab and put it in the wall? Uh, but then I thought for that I need to buy a tab. Now I already had Raspberry Pis and touchscreens lying around my home. So I thought, why not taking all those things together and make a DIY home assistant kiosk? So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own uh, DIY home assistant kiosk using Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to use Raspberry Pi 4, a touchscreen and few other components to build that thing. And I'll show you how you can take a Raspberry Pi, how you can set the kiosk mode. So basically whenever your that device will be turned on, automatically it is going to open the home assistant dashboard in full screen and you cannot exit from there. So it will be like complete standalone device. And from there you can control your, like you can control your all home assistant dashboards and everything. So all of these things I'll show you, I'll provide you all the things like the 3D files I have used, the codes I have used and everything I'll provide you in the video. So now uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe it so we can make more premium contents like this. And now without wasting any time, let's get started. Okay, so guys, first let's talk about what are the components we are using in this video. So the very first thing is obviously the touch screen. So it's a 11.1 inches touch screen from WebShare. And as you can see, this is how the back looks like. It's a turn on and off switch, a HDMI port and two USB port, one for touch, one for power. And it works in five volts. Okay. So the next thing is we need a cover for it. So here I'm using a 3D printed covers. So we have designed and 3D printed, 3D printed desk. The print uh, didn't came that well, but yeah, it is gonna work just fine. So the main thing is here we are having a hole for a switch, and in the bottom side here also we are having a hole for uh, your. Here we are going to put a DC female jack, and that's it overall about the case. Uh, next we are going to use the main controller, which is in my case a Raspberry Pi 4, and I'm using a 4 4 GB version. Okay, you can use any other Pi also. Uh, these are the main components, but except that also here we are going to use this button. This is a like push uh, This kind of push button you press it once and it will be turned on you press it again. It will be turned off Then there is a DC jack we are going to use uh, Basically, we are going to give five volts to it and from this G DC jack only we are going to provide power to our Raspberry Pi as well as our main uh, the screen Next, we need a HDMI cable and a U-shaped HDMI. So how I'm going to do it is, so it's a micro HDMI to HDMI female and here I'm having a U-shaped HDMI. So I'm going to connect it in this way and next I'm going to connect uh, this thing I'm going to connect in the screen. Uh, so here if I show you, here is the HDMI. So I'm going to connect it in this way. Uh, just give me a moment in this way I'm going to connect it and now I have the micro HDMI here I'm going to connect this thing with the HD uh, with the Raspberry Pi okay and then we need few uh, micro uh, USB cables so one is we need a, a USB cable for touch uh, next we need a USB C cable to power our Raspberry Pi and finally another uh, micro uh, USB cable to power our touch screen and almost this is all the things we really need to build it.
our Raspberry Pi based Keyox is completely ready as you can see and now we are going to connect the power with it. So here we are using a 5 volt 3 ampere adapter and here I'm going to turn this uh, Keyox on now and within few seconds we should see the screen yeah as you can see here that it currently it is booting and within few seconds it should be booted now we can see the screen we are inside our pi we can access the touch screen also so now it's completely ready now it's time to move to the software part where i'll show you how you can set up the keyox mode and can access your home assistant dashboard from there so let's start with the software part. So in the software part, the very first thing is we need to install the OS in the memory card. And for that, I'm going to use Raspberry Pi Imager. So in Raspberry Pi Imager, uh, you just go to choose OS. From there, either you can use Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit or Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit. Now here, you uh, using 32 bit will be a better option because 32 bit will have less load. And as this system will be running uh, 24 into C65 hours, so the Raspberry Pi will generate less heat and it will be better for the system. So I'm going to use 32 bit. The storage, you have to put a memory card and you select the memory card from here. Next, you go to settings. From there, you set the host name as Raspberry Pi dot local or any other name also you can give. And uh, you make sure that the SSH is enabled. And here the username is Pi. You put the SSH uh, password. So I'm going to put in any password here. And there, then you can set up. If you are doing a wireless setup, you have to put your Wi-Fi SSID and password. So here is my Wi-Fi SSID. And here I need to put my Wi-Fi password. And next, you can just go and uh, make sure all these are selected. And you can just click on save. And finally, once you select the memory card, click on write. It will take few minutes. And after that, the OS will be uh, installed in the memory card. And then we can put the memory card in Raspberry Pi and we can start the Raspberry Pi. So once you power your Raspberry Pi on, you can just uh, go to your terminal or if you are in Windows, you can also use Putty to SSH into your Pi. In Mac you, or Linux, if you have to do it, you can simply write SSH Pi, which is your username at the date, Raspberry Pi dot local, which is your host name or uh, something else if you have uh, used something else. And uh, in uh, case of Windows, you can simply use Putty. You can put the same username and same host name. And next, you can click enter. And in Putty, you can simply provide the password. Uh, give, provide your password, enter. And now you are inside your Raspberry Pi. Now I will make it full screen. Next, you have to write Raspi config. Once you do that, uh, you have to use sudo Raspi config. And once you do that, you will get into a settings. There, the very first thing is we are going to enable VNC. So you will get the desktop. So here I'm going to go to interface options. Here I'm going to go to VNC and I'm going to enable VNC. So once I enable VNC, so now we can control the pipe from VNC viewer. So I'm going to open my VNC viewer. From here, you have to simply write raspberry pi dot local. Or without doing all these things, you can also directly connect your Raspberry Pi through your HDMI cable. So now we are inside your as our Raspberry Pi. The next we will start doing the Keox mode. So we have to set up the Raspberry Pi in such a way that whenever the Raspberry Pi will boot and it will start, it is going to open our Home Assistant dashboard. Now before doing anything like that, the very first thing we'll do is we are going to open the Chromium browser in our Raspberry Pi. And in our Chromium browser, we'll check that if our home assistant, we can access it from here or not. So we are going to write home assistant dot local 8123, uh, port 8123. And here, if you open it, as you can see from here, I can, uh, I can see my home assistant dashboard. That means that my Raspberry Pi can access my home assistant dashboard. Now we have to make sure that whenever our Pi boots, it will open this page. But it will open this page in full screen and also these bars will not be shown in the screen and also the user cannot exit from the screen. Okay, all these things we have to make sure. So the very first thing is we will open our terminal and here we have, we have to install a library. It's called uh, wtype. It is going to automate the keyboard for us. So you just click here and wtype will be installed. Next, we are going to write sudo raspi config. So again, we will uh, change the configuration a little bit. So here we are going to go to system options. From there, we will go to, uh, as you can see here, boot auto login. Here we'll click. And finally, here we will go to the last option, which is desktop auto login. And we will click OK. And it will be done within very few seconds. Now here we are doing this so that whenever the Pi boots up, automatically it is going to log into the desktop and we don't need to provide any password or anything. So click on finish 
and it will ask you to reboot just click yes and it will reboot now we have to write code so whenever our pi boots up it is going to open that chromium browser and that uh, very specific url now for that we are going to modify a file which is basically dot config slash wayfire.ini now here you need to make sure that you are using the latest raspberry pi os in my case which is bookworm because in the previous versions of raspberry pi os like before bookworm the settings will be different so make sure you are using the latest one you open this file this is how the file will look like now as you can see in the file there are multiple sections like there is this input there is an input device and all these things now in your case you may find the auto start section here if you find the auto start section in this file then you only need to append some uh, append some lines there and in case you don't have any auto start uh, section here then you need to add the auto start section here you need to paste all these lines uh, now as you can see uh, this is how the auto start section should look like so you if you have already auto start section and something is written you just have to append these three lines at the end of that section now as i don't have any auto start section i'm going to add the auto start section and i'm going to put these three lines now i'll explain you what these three lines are doing here so if we see in full screen so basically this very first line it's basically going to open a chromium browser now in chromium browser what url it's going to open it's going to open the home assistant dot local and port 8123 this url it's going to open uh, as you can see dash dash kiosk so basically it's saying that it's going to open this uh, browser in kiosk mode next as you can see no error dialog that means if while loading this website or url if you get any error error message your website is not your uh, kiosk is not going to show that message uh, disable info bar so basically it's going to hide that top info bar also no first run so sometimes what happens when you are opening a, a url it may show you some dialogues like login and all these things those all things is not going to show to you and as you can see uh, ozone platform wayland so basically here we are mentioning that we are going to use wayland display server protocol now if you don't know what is wayland display server protocol you can uh, just google it i'm not going to explain this in this video uh, but basically previously all raspberry pi os it used that uh, something called x11 display server protocol but that's new bookworm os is using a wayland protocol and that's why here using a wayland display server protocol so basically this wayland display server protocol is better than x11 uh, in multiple aspects uh, so that's why it's better if you're using bookworm your overall kiosk will work better okay next you have this uh, as you can see uh, just give me a moment as you can see enabled uh, feature enable features equal to uh, overlay scroll bar so it's saying basically uh, if there is need then only it's going to show you a scroll bar else not so if your web page the web page you're opening it's really big then only it will show a scroll bar except it's not going to show and start maximize that means it's going to start the web page in the maximized version okay the next uh, the next uh, line we are adding screen saver equal to false that means we are saying that no screen saver required we always want our uh, chromium browser that means our home assistant dashboard only in the screen if you want to have the screen saver option enable you can just write here true and finally we have dpms so dpms is basically basically you can say it's a power management uh, display power management system so what happens that when you are not using the display it's going to turn it off okay now here we are making it false because i personally want that my uh, this my kiosk will be turned on uh, all the time so all the time i can see my dashboard and everything now once you add this uh, three lines in the auto start section you can simply click on control x and then you click on y and enter and your file will be saved now we are done with the settings now we are just going to do sudo reboot now if we do sudo reboot uh, next time whenever you are going to open our screen you will see that automatically it is going to load the uh, home assistant dashboard okay so now as you can see from vnc also if i connect to this as uh, so connect to this raspberry pi you can see i can only see this screen okay now i cannot see anything else so automatically it is turning uh, it is going to open the chromium browser and going to load this page and i cannot exit from here also okay now what if you have to somehow exit from the screen and how you can turn off this device now because as you can see here i cannot see any shut you cannot access the raspberry pi shutdown button also so how you will shut down this machine 
and how you are going to exit from the screen now to exit from the screen is very easy you can simply connect with uh, connect with this raspberry pi through ssh so i'll just connect with this raspberry pi through ssh so now as you can see i'm inside my raspberry pi i can simply write sudo pkill chromium and as you can see now if i open my raspberry pi as you can see it has killed the chromium browser okay this is the simplest way you can actually kill the process and you can just get back and now you can just go here and you can shut down but again this is not a good solution uh, now i'll show you how you can add a button in your dashboard in your home assistant dashboard so that from your home assistant dashboard itself you can turn off this system now in my case if, if i can show you uh, if i open my own home assistant as you can see here i have a button called screen off and if i just click this button uh, my home assistant key will be turned off i'll show you the demo now first i'll tell you how the overall thing is working now here our home assistant is running in a separate raspberry pi and this screen where from where we are accessing this home assistant dashboard is a, in a separate raspberry pi so basically here we have to turn off uh, the Kiox raspberry pi from the home assistant raspberry pi or from home assistant whatever device you are using now to do that uh, we have to send the ssh command from our home assistant to the kiox raspberry pi that you power off okay now to do that the very first thing we have to do is we have to go to hacks now if you don't know how to install hacks there is a video in my channel you can just go and check it out now here you need to search search for ssh command okay so as you can see here is this ssh command uh, repository so you can just click on it and here I already have downloaded it, so it's not showing the download option, but in your case, it should show a download option. You just click on download and it will be downloaded. Now, this SSH command add-on is just going to, uh, basically, it can send SSH commands to any uh, host. Okay, so now I'll show you how you can do that. Now, after you installed SSH command, next thing is you have to go to your settings. And from there you go to device services and from there you go to integrations. From there you click on add integration, you search for SSH command. And as you can see, it's showing that it's already configured, but you, in your case, you have to just click on setup and within few seconds, you'll be done. Okay. Once you set up the SSH command here, you are done uh, doing the complete uh, SSH setup. Uh, next thing is we have to create a script, which that script is going to send that command to our, uh, that Raspberry Pi. Now for that, now you can add setup, uh, you can add a script by just going to here and devices services and from there by not device services, sorry, from automation and scenes and by go to scripts. But I'll show you how to do it manually by uh, by just adding the .yml file because I think that's actually an easier way. So for that, what you need to do is you need to uh, first go to here in your settings, go to add ons here. You need an add on called file editor. If you don't have the file editor add-on, you can just click on add-on store and from here you can search for file editor and you can simply download it. Now I already have, I'm already having it. So you click on file editor, from there you click on open web UI. Now once you open the web UI, you just click on the file button. Here are a lot of files you will find. You have to go to scripts.yml and here you have to add this set of lines. So obviously you will get the code in the description. So here we are setting the name of the script as RPI power off. Uh, as you can see, the name is RPI power off. So here very first thing is you need to write the host. So here I'm writing my IP address, IP address of the uh, where my uh, Kiox is running, the IP address of the Raspberry Pi where Kiox is running. You can also write the host name like raspberry pi dot local or whatever you are using. Next, you need to put your port number, your user ID and your password. Now password you need to write insert in, uh, inside this quotes. And finally, the command you need to pass. Now, command is here very important. If you simply write power off, it may not work. So you need to write sudo uh, s power off. And here you also need to put the password. So because sometimes when we are using sudo and we are using uh, power off command, we need to put the password. Now to put the password, we are using a trick that we are passing the password to this command. So it is like you are echoing your password to this command. So here you have to replace the password with your password and here also. Okay, and finally the action will be ssh command dot uh, execute uh, exec command. So basically uh, it is the add-on you are using and you are saying that from the add-on ssh command you use the execute command uh, this method, uh, this action you need to take. You just save this file. Okay, uh, so you can simply click here and your file will be saved. Okay, and once you saved your file, then you can simply go to settings from there you go to automation scenes. Uh, scripts and now from here you can see your script here okay 
and if you cannot see it you can just do a quick reboot of your home assistant and you will be able to see it now if i just click on it and i can if i just show you open it you will see you can see all the things like the host the port the username password everything you can see here also okay now here we have already added the our added our script now finally we know now to test the script you can simply click here and you can click on run if you click on run it is going to turn off your uh Keox raspberry pi now finally to add the button in the your dashboard you can just go here here i'm showing how i have styled it and how i am using it but definitely you can use some other way also so click on edit and come here and uh, here you can simply add a section and you can write this code so i'll show you the raw code this is how it looks like so here i'm using a grid and inside that grid i'm having three basically three columns so in future also i'll add few buttons here and then i'm using cards here i'm using type as button the name i'm putting as screen off i'm using the power icon and in tap action uh, the action is perform action and the perform action i have put a script dot rpa power of so i'm just using my rpa power of script okay so this is the code i'm using but definitely you can just uh, you can add any styling just you have to use the uh, tap action as script dot rpa power of this is the main thing you need to use but you can use your own styling also once you save that you are going to have your button in the screen now i'll show you in the screen itself how the overall thing is working so here as you can see my home assistant Keox and two of my fish tanks and both of them like the light is turned off. Now here I'll turn off both of the lights in the tanks and now if you see both of the lights have been turned on. So this is how I can control my appliances from my home assistant and in my home assistant if you see I have another tab for my CCTV cameras so I can just go into there though the CCTV cameras I have disabled for now. So I can access my all my different tabs and here is our power off button you can click on that and then our screen will be turned off. Okay guys so thank you for watching this video and I hope you have learned something from this video. In that case please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so that we can make more contents like this and many more home assistant raspberry pi based contents are coming very soon so stay tuned with us and I'll see you in the very next video.